welcome back so the next thing we want to do is create the roughen operation so we can get rid of all this material on top so first let me put this into the front view now real quick a roughing operation for those of you who are not familiar with it is a way to get rid of most material as fast as possible so for example we want to get rid of most of these chunks but it's not going to really uh, get very defined on, for example, the radius that's over here. Especially if you have a surface that is uh, perpendicular right here. It won't really come in and machine it uh, perfectly in the corner and without leaving a big radius in there. So basically, it's just a way for the tool to come in and machine as much material as possible and as fast as a way as possible. This way, you can just come in with another tool in our next session and we will create a finishing operation that will make the entire surface much nicer and will finish off the part. So roughing is just to get rid of as much material as possible as quickly as possible as well. Okay, so let's get started on that. So come over here under lathe toolpath and select rough. All right, so now we'll ask you to select. You can select a body, you can select the surface. Now the best method, and this is why I like uh, MasterCam for SolidWorks a lot, is because it allows me to just go ahead and select all the surfaces that I'm machining. So let me place this back at the isometric view, zoom in, and basically I already know that I'm machining this surface, this one, this, this, and that. So there's five total faces that I'm machining. They're called faces according to SolidWorks, and that's why it names them face one through five. So go ahead and check OK to accept that. And then you're going to have now the lathe rough parameters or properties come up. Again, we're not going to be touching the tool numbers. As you can see, the tool number, first of all, you cannot change it. That's because you've already selected to automatically uh, adjust the tool numbers and name them sequentially. So this is already named on its own. OK, so first and foremost, uh, you're going to be selecting the rough uh, the rough one, but not the face per, uh, tool. Okay, so we've used the rough face right to face the to do the facing operation for our exercise. So this is going to be the rough right, but it's going to be the OD rough. So come over here until you see the OD rough right over here, at 80 degrees. All right, and as you can see, it'll automatically name it number two because we've told it we we need to be naming them sequentially. So just select that again. Uh, this is going to have a radius of 0 0.0313. Uh, tool number is going to be 0202. And OD roughing tool. We're going to call it roughing operation. And again, we're not going to play around with the feeds and speeds. That's more of a CNC uh, and preference depending on the tool and the material you're using. Let's go ahead and go to rough parameters. And again, this is something really nice in MasterCam uh, that it gives you a nice graphic and it tells you what everything is. So you don't have to get, you won't be getting confused with it. Now, real quick, we'll go over that. Overlap will allow you to, if you click on it, it will allow you to define how much you want to overlap between each pass, like how much you want to overlap that tool. All right. So for this one, we have 0 0.01 overlap. This way we make sure, we, uh, it, this is the best way to make sure that you're machining and you're not skipping and leaving burrs between passes. Depth cut. Now, auto would be nice. MasterCam has a very nice way to automatically do that. I like to do equal steps of 0.1. So each step will be 100 thou, machining 100 thou at a time. If you have a nice tool, a bigger tool, for example, that's allowed to machine uh, better than this, you're definitely welcome to use that and define it as something bigger than that as well. And the minimum cut depth has to be 0 0.001. Okay. And you can also define the increments. But to define that, you have to actually go to incremental and select increments to define it. Let's go back to, this is basically increments. So you start out at 0 0.05 and increments by 0 0.005 or however uh, you want. But obviously if we do equal steps, it will automatically go up 0.1 at a time, okay? So for the stock to leave in the X and Z, this is how much stock you're leaving. Well, obviously this is a roughing operation. So you have to leave some stock for the finishing operation. And we're, for this one, we're going to leave it as is. We're going to leave 0 0.01 in X and Z. And again, X and Z is basically Z and D. Uh, okay. So we're going to leave that as 0 0.01 and 0 0.01. All right. And for equal entry, this is defining how much you're... Uh, you know, before it starts machining, how much you want it to, uh, you know, how far from the surface you want it to start. And it will be 0.1. For the exit amount, let's go ahead and do 0 0.05 at least. You want to make sure your tool always enters and exits a little bit past your part to make sure that it machines your entire part. Cutting method, one way. Now, you can change this to a different one, zigzags if you want. And I'll show you those later. But one way is the best method for OD uh, roughing because it just comes in and goes up. And it keeps doing that until it finishes your entire part. 
composition type uh, you can do computer if you like and the computer will calculate it for you or uh, what I like to use is where and this compensates for the wear of the tool you can leave everything the same now these I recommend only changing them if when you start machining you realize that something is wrong it's machining maybe the bottom or the top or something is not right about it but this is the compensation direction it really has to do with which direction your uh, spindle is spinning all right uh, again, a lead in, lead it out. I'll open it real quick to show you how it is. But this is how you define how your tool leads in and leads out of the part. We're not going to be using it in this one, so we're going to keep this uh, as is. And you can also uh, go into the plunge parameters and select how you want your tool to plunge into your part. Now, this is very useful when you have contours. And I will show you how to do that, for example, in our next exercise, not this one. All right, uh, stock recognition. I'm gonna keep this disabled, but I will show you how this helps later on in this uh, in these exercises. So go ahead and select OK, and you will see really quickly. It will show you the tool and it's machining the part, but you won't really see it until it's done verification. And let's go ahead and place this in the front view so you can see it real quick. So I'm gonna zoom in real quick, and you're gonna see that your tool enters at point one away from the part. Now you can see that this is a little bit too far. So you can come in and change this to 0 0.05 so your tool doesn't have to go all the way back here, um, you know, but it comes in a little bit closer to the part. And it will machine your entire part. So this is 0.1 at a time until it finishes your entire part. And then it will exit here 0 0.05 as well. So the last exit was 0 0.05. Remember, we told it to exit 0 0.05. So while we're at it, let's go ahead and change this to 0 0.05. So I'm going to expand my lathe rough. Go to my parameters, just click once and change this, the entry amount to 0 0.05 and select OK. Now you're going to notice now under the two path there's an X. So that means this operation is dirty. It's no longer good until you go back and regenerate. The best way to do this is come over here and regenerate all dirty operation. And MasterCam for SolidWorks will go back and re-verify that. Now when it's done, you're going to notice that your part now is a little bit closer. It starts out right here instead of... Um, all the way over here when it started out before so that helps you a lot okay so and then also saves on your uh, tool path and your operation time uh, to do the roughen operation so the reason why again I like the shaded area is because now if you zoom in you're gonna notice that there is material left that's the point zero one that you told I told you to leave in the X and Z or the X and uh, yes the X and Z so that's where it leaves the material for you and in our next session, we're going to be doing the finishing operation, which allows you to come in and just finish the rest of the material that is left on the part. So we've created the finishing operation, the roughing operation, and we're ready to do the finishing. But before we do this, let's go ahead and see something new. In our next session, I'm going to show you how to go to the uh, verify and look at this machining uh, operation, verify the machining operation in a different window.